Hey everyone, hope you guys are all doing well. Um, this is the video of me going ahead and reading through the Compromise of 1850 for you guys so that we can talk over it and talk through some of the map analysis stuff like that. Hopefully I can answer some of your questions. Um, should be very quick, very straightforward. Um, and if you still have questions after this, please, please, please shoot me an email or send me a text on our mind. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> Compromise of 1850. And I'm going to go ahead and blow this up so it's easier to read. All right. Concerned over growing abolitionism, Southerners wanted a strong national fugitive or runaway slave law. Okay. So because of growing abolitionism, that group of people who wanted slavery to end, okay, the Southerners in response wanted a strong national law that allowed them to track down runaway slaves. Okay. That's going to be important to know. In 1849, California applied to become a state without slavery. If California became a free state, slave states would be outvoted in the Senate. Similar problem that we had in the Missouri Compromise. Even worse, anti-slavery groups wanted to ban slavery in Washington, D.C. That's the capital, okay? Southerners wanted, or excuse me, Southerners talked about seceding from or leaving the Union. Okay, so Southerners are already talking about leaving the Union because of California becoming a free state and Washington, D.C. thinking about becoming a free state. Okay, in 1850, Senator Henry Clay, once again, of Kentucky, suggested a compromise. California would be a free state, but the other new territories would have no limits on slavery. That is different than what the Missouri Compromise said. In addition, the slave trade, but not slavery itself, would be illegal in Washington, D.C. So basically, that would say you could still own slaves in Washington, D.C., but you could not sell or buy slaves in the city of Washington, D.C. Clay also pushed for a stronger fugitive slave law. There was a heated debate over the many parts of the compromise. After much debate and several different voting sessions, Congress passed the Compromise of 1850. Part of the Compromise of 1850 was the Fugitive Slave Act, which is honestly one of the worst things we've ever done. Anyone who helped a fugitive could be fined or imprisoned. In response, the Underground Railroad was formed. So before this, if slaves escaped from, let me go ahead and get my pen out here, this area of the country and made it to the north, they were fine. Now, because of the Fugitive Slave Law, if you're somebody, say, up here in New York, and you help a slave get from here to here, you could be arrested if caught. So slaves are no longer stopping up here in the north. They're going all the way to Canada. So they're going through the northern United States because nowhere in the United States is safe for a runaway slave anymore. Okay, that's what that means. Let me go ahead and erase this, and then we'll dive into our map analysis here. All right, let's see. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at our map analysis. Okay. So one of the key things we're going to need to know, because the map talks about it, is popular sovereignty. So if you guys look over here, it says open to slavery by principle of popular sovereignty. What is that? Well, popular sovereignty, okay, the people vote to be a free state or a slave state. So in this case, California would vote, okay, if they were entering the union, to decide, do we want to be a free state or a slave state? All the people would go to the polls and they would check, I want to be a free state, I want to be a slave state, and whichever one won the majority, that's what they would become, okay? That's what popular sovereignty means. All right, before we jump in here, let's go ahead and look at our key. I'll go ahead and box that in for us, okay? So let's take a look at this. A free state or territory. So these are free currently. Slaves are not allowed here. California, Oregon, unorganized. You guys can read the rest anywhere that's in this green. Very straightforward. That is free. You are not allowed to own slaves here. Okay. Yellow is a slave state or territory. So starting in Texas, the Indian Territory, and so on. Anywhere in yellow, including these small ones over here. Okay, is a slave state. And then this dark burgundy red, okay, I guess not burgundy, burnt is a better term, okay, is open to slavery 
by principle of popular sovereignty. That's that new thing. So the people can vote. That's the New Mexico Territory and the Utah Territory. Basically, these people, when they decide to enter as a state, will get to vote whether or not to be a slave state or a free state. That's what that's talking about. Okay? So let's go ahead and talk through our map analysis questions. Results of the Compromise of 1850. First, once again, you're going to count the number of free states and the number of slave states. Just make sure you count through. Double check your work. It's very straightforward. Next, we have list the new free states and territories after the Compromise of 1850. Okay, so part of what you guys are going to have to do is you're going to have to go look at your map from the previous day and compare the new ones versus the old ones. What new states are free? Okay. Same here for the slave states, you'll have to compare for that. All right. Now, what was different about the Utah Territory and the New Mexico Territory? Okay. After this deal, there's something different about those two compared to everyone else. We've kind of talked about it already, but I'll let you guys figure that out. Okay. And then, what do you think open to slavery by principle of popular sovereignty means? We've kind of talked through that. It should be pretty straightforward. And then lastly, do you think the Compromise of 1850 was an effective compromise? Why or why not? So do you think this solved that issue of, oh, the slave is going to be upset, or excuse me, the South is going to be upset again because they have less representation in the House of Representatives and Senate? Does this solve that issue? This compromise, does it solve it? And then tell me why or why not. All right. Well, that's all for this one. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for listening.